Hello everyone, welcome again. In this software testing tutorial, we are going to learn what is exploratory testing. Now, understanding exploratory testing is very important in terms of interview or even if you're working any software testing project, you need to know what exactly exploratory testing is, when to do it and how it is helpful in any software testing project. Now, exploratory testing itself is a very wide topic, but in this tutorial, I'll try to cover most of the key concepts uh, of the exploratory testing. But if you want to learn the technique, you can, you know, spend uh, a lot of time. Um, you, you can Google around. There are a lot of courses available that you can do to basically learn about exploratory, uh, you know, uh, testing. So if we talk about this exploratory testing, the word exploratory has the word explore in it, right? So what this exploratory testing means is you explore the software or the application that you are testing. Okay. So you do not have a front, you know, documentation or you do not do a lot of documentation test cases, etc. So you explore the software. Say, for example, this is your, you know, software, the black box, say, for example, for you and you start using that particular application okay and once you start using the application you explore it and based on the exploration you start writing the test cases you start documenting and uh, you also start you know the execution okay so that is what all uh, is you know exploratory testing now exploratory testing was introduced by chem canner and this was introduced in the book uh, of Kim Tanner, which is testing computer software, right? So if you are interested to learn a lot more detail about exploratory testing, you can go through that book and it has explained a lot more detail about the exploratory testing. Now, exploratory testing is random. It is not structured. It is random and unstructured and it reveals the bug that might be missed by your structured testing, right? So usually till now we have been learning about all the structured testing approach. So we do unit testing, integration system, and we write the test cases and we execute the test cases as we go along. And based on the requirement, we verify whether the requirements have been met or not. However, in exploratory testing, it is different. It is basically very unstructured. So you just start interacting with the software. You do not structure it a lot. Uh, you interact with the application and based on the interaction, you come up with some documentation and any defect and issues that you found during that course okay now when to use the exploratory testing so when do you use it okay so if i say when to use exploratory testing okay so this testing is very important to uncover the defects that could be missed by your traditional approaches of testing right the reason for that is you do not um, think about or as you interact with the software, you cannot come up with all the scenarios that you can write or document those as part of the test cases, right? So many of the uh, testing or uh, test cases that you run as part of the exploratory testing are from the tester's mindset. So basically tester's mindset is how the end user will interact, right? So uh, if I talk about the tester mindset, it's not just about thinking uh, from the end user's perspective, but also from other business process perspective. So when you apply all those perspectives and you test the software, or you interact with the application, then you come up with different paths that you can cover in exploratory testing, right? And once you cover the those paths, you will uncover a lot of defects that could have not been found by the structured testing approach. So when you use it, you basically use it um, to say, for example, if I have, I do not have a lot of time and a luxury of time to cover all the end to end scenarios and all, uh, all the, you know, structured testing. So the first uh, point where, or the first reason when we use exploratory testing is basically when we have the time uh, limit right when we do not have enough time to release any software so we have time limit and we want to make sure that the software works perfectly fine so exploratory text testing can be really helpful in those sort of scenarios the second uh, point is when you want the early feedback okay so early feedback is required for the application okay so you do not want to wait until end to end 
testing phase. Um, in that particular case, whatever application or the software is ready in that particular software, you can start doing the uh, exploratory testing and exploratory testing will uncover very key issues that might not be, uh, you know, uh, you might not be able to uncover with the structured testing approach. So if there is an early feedback required, you, you start with the uh, exploratory testing. The third point is um, it will help you to find new tests, right? So that's another good thing about exploratory testing. So find new, so find new defects as well as find new tests. So as you interact with the software, you also think about the different parts of the software, right? So how the user will interact. So when you follow the structured testing approach, you do not, you won't be able to document all those parts in the structured testing approach. But with exploratory testing, you can find those new test cases as you go along and exploring the software. So these are some of the uh, key points or the key you know, reasons when you can use exploratory testing. There can be many more reasons as well, right? So this is complete, uh, you know, big topic in all exploratory testing. But these are some of the key things that you can remember for the interview perspective, right? Now, if I talk about how to do it, right? So let's say, let's cover some of the points of how to do exploratory testing. So I'll say how to do exploratory testing. So if I say how to do exploratory testing, couple of points you need to remember. So, bug classification. So, say for example, and this is not a comprehensive list, so you can just, you know, Google around and see what all other options are available. But these are, these four or five points that I'm going to cover will be good enough from, you know, understanding point of view and interview point of view. So, bug classification. So, basically what happens is, if you are testing the application and you are using the structured approach, so in any project you will do the structured approach, but then you will also do the exploratory testing, okay? So when you are doing the structured testing and you see the classification or you see the existing bugs, you can analyze those bugs and you can see which are the modules, right? So for example, there is a module A, B, C, which has highest number of defects, okay? and if I say A, B, C, so in real uh, terms, say for example, this is the registration module, okay, of the e-commerce website. So this could be one of the modules which has highest number of defects. So when we talk about bug classification, we'll classify these sort of modules which have highest number of defects, and then we'll target those modules with the exploratory testing. So this is one of the approach to how to do e exploratory testing. So you classify the bugs, and then based on that classification, you prepare the test charter. Test charter is very important, right? So there is not much documentation, but you have to prepare test charter for the exploratory testing, which is basically just a single page document or, you know, a couple of pages uh, with all the details in there. So you have, you know, what exactly you want to test, what will be the time box, so you time box, right? So time box, so you provide the uh, timing, how long you are going to do the exploratory testing. So 30 minutes, one hour, one and a half hour, right? So that is what you all goes into the test charter. It's basically, you can remember it as a document wherein all the details of the exploratory testing go. Then the third option is basically, so time box, timing goes in there. And also remember about that your time box. So you do not keep doing the testing for unlimited amount of time. You have to basically time box your exploratory testing to certain time and that time goes into the test charter. So in test charter, all the details go. So first thing is you classify the bugs and figure out what are the modules you are going to test. Then in test charter, you prepare those. In the test charter, you prepare, you provide the time box, how long you are going to test those modules or exploratory test those modules. And then basically once you have tested, you provide the results, right? So you review, you review the results, okay? So these are, you know, four key steps basically that you can follow. Out of these four, this can change accordingly. So for, say for example, you have done your structure testing, then you can do that particular first point. But if you haven't done your structure testing at all, um, or you are in the initial phases and you want to go 
through um, you know finding the defects early then in that case you cannot do that birth classification you can directly um, you know prepare the test charter and you can specify the modules that you want to cover uh, you prepare uh, you provide the time box and you then review results accordingly right so these are some of the points that will help you to basically understand how you can do exploratory testing right so that's all for exploratory testing it is you know in terms of definition and understanding the high level it is very easy you basically explore the system and as you explore you document and you report the defects okay you do not it is unstructured it is not a structured approach and it is random okay so that is the key thing in terms of interview that you need to remember and other points that I have covered will help you to explain it and correlate it with the real examples. So that's all for this tutorial. Hope it was helpful. Please do share and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching.